It's Palace Assini by Parma Giannino. One of the real benefits of bringing these paintings in here is that we can get close to the details. And Assini is identified by this brooch on her breastplate. A figure of victory flying over a city with then an inscription underneath Athene, the goddess of warfare and wisdom and the patron of Athens. So Athene is sort of a warrior goddess, but no harm in being exceptionally beautiful as well. <laughs> no. And it is such a privilege to be standing this close to it. I've, you know, you can see every tiny little mark. This highlight in the curl here is just five tiny little marks of purest bright colour. I mean, the treatment of the hair is fantastic. Yeah, it almost resembles spun gold. Yeah. And the light is really striking in this painting as well, the way that she recedes into the dark background. As if it's sort of celestial. It's interesting, actually, because you'd expect maybe this female warrior to have a bit more of a sort of triumphant pose, but there's something quite demure here. Yeah, and quite enigmatic. In fact, Parmigian, you know, planned the composition so that her eyes were looking out towards her, and he made an adjustment at a later stage so that she was looking down. And I think it does make her expression much more demure. Oh, it's just fascinating. Exactly. But my favourite detail, getting really close to this, is actually the exposed hem of the cloak around her. And I think it's a very human detail in what is fundamentally a portrait of a goddess. Mm. And it must reference her other patronages of spinning and weaving. It's absolutely incredible, the finesse of it and how mm. refined it is. But there's a painting in here that's not even finished and it still manages to be a masterpiece by Andrea Del Sarto. I think this is one of the most interesting portraits. We've moved from an artist exploiting the richness of materials to this, which is actually quite a lot of scrubby brown paint. Yeah, I mean, this is just all the under sketch. Absolutely. There's a wonderful layering process that we see in this portrait that actually lies behind all of the other Finnish paintings in this exhibition. It's like a secret reveal, isn't it? Like, this is how they were all made. I mean, look at the lines on the neck. Exactly. We see here the kind of inner workings of a Renaissance studio. Even half the face is not finished. How interesting. Exactly. This portrait was left in the artist's studio on his death from the plague in 1529. And so we see the ground colour. We then see a first layer of coloured paint in her sleeve, where he's also giving, giving the fabric a bit of life. And there's this really visible underdrawing in the neck, so it, he's starting to bring her to life mm. with more movement. And the face is much more finished, so presumably he intended to return to the costume later. Mm, but, but this side of the face is not very finished at all. It's, it's kind of a strange, slightly scary portrait as a consequence. This is Del Sarto using the technique of sfumato, and it's this subtle transition from light to dark, which gives the impression of a kind of three-dimensional woman moving mm. towards us. Mm. You could almost deconstruct a masterpiece, and many artists today making portraits would probably love to spend loads and loads of time with it. I mean, it's almost like he's left us a tutorial from the 16th century to say this is the before and this is the after. Yeah, absolutely. And don't worry about the details of the costume until you've got the face. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm.